online church experience. My name's Sharice. Hi, and I'm Jordan, and we're part of the CFA Reach team, a global mosaic of local churches in the CFA movement. Absolutely, and we have got a great experience for it's you today. Thank you for joining us. Oh, um, I think you're meant to have look a little bit more dressed up. I got told like church at home or church in your living room or church where you are. Oh no, they're at their home, but we still need to look presentable, you know? I think I'm fine. I think you need to go get changed. Okay. Anyway, we're going to flick to some of our pastors. Stay tuned, stay engaged, and we'll see you really soon. Hi, everyone, and welcome to church. It's great to have you with us here this morning. I've got Rach here with me, and she's going to open for us in prayer. Thanks, Pastor Joe. Hey, if you feel comfortable, um, why don't you close your eyes and bow your heads? We're going to pray together. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much that we can gather today um, in this new format, Lord. We thank you for the internet um, and all the opportunities it gives us. Lord, we just um, pray that your peace and your presence would be in our homes or wherever we're um, uh, joining from this morning, Lord. And we just, uh, we bless this service in your name. Amen.
our Savior Mercy of our God Cross that leaves no question Of the measure of His love Our chains are gone Our debt is paid The cross has over Giving is an act of worship towards God and uh, it's so wonderful, isn't it, to be able to partner with him in building his church across the globe. So right now we've got an opportunity to give. Uh, You may have already given online this month or this week, but we've got some options that are coming up on the screen right now uh, so that you can give online uh, if you would like to do that. But right now we're going to engage together, uh, whether we're in our lounge rooms or wherever we are, and uh, we're going to worship God together. So bless you. Our fight is with weapons unseen. Your enemies crash to their knees. As we rise up in worship When trials 
arms unleash like a flood. The battle belongs to our God as we cry out in Awesome. Oh, what a great way 
awesome experience. Yes. We were all here. Yes. You were here too. You were there. Hey. And you as well. And you down the back. I see you too. Oh, that yes. was Luna was so here. good. I know. And for our kids. Yes. Hey, kids. Yeah, yeah. We love kids here. Yeah. Yes, hey, kids. <laughs> if you want to stay with your parents now yep. and watch yep. the message, you can. Great. Yeah, Maybe just awesome. do 20 star fun. jumps and Ooh. then sit down and watch the message, which is going to be amazing. <laughs> be great. Yep. However. Yes. Yes. yes, however, if you would like to move on over to a cool. kids' church program, you can uh, hit the link in the top right corner. Yes, in the top right. And that will take you to our kids' <laughs> video for today. Yes. yes. Um, Otherwise, though, it'll be free. It'll be available all week, so you can watch oh, it yes. whenever. Tuesday is so. a great day yeah, to watch Tuesday's it. Wednesday, a great day. another Wednesday. great day. Every day, Friday, <laughs> whatever yes. you feel. Fantastic. Yeah, For yeah. now, we're gonna get right into our message. So get your awesome. notes ready, yeah. and it's gonna be so yeah. good. See, See you, team. Bye. Hi, church. So we're going to. Um, continue with our great new uh, program this time tomorrow. And we're going to hear from Dan now about um, what this looks like for him. So Daniel, yes. it's great hey. to have you in the hot seat. Tell us what does tomorrow look like for you? For me tomorrow, it will be, um, I'll, uh, I'll need to touch base with all my clients exactly, what, you know, like I suppose with everybody. It's very different now navigating through these times um, given about two months ago, I'd be getting up, going to you know do things in the morning, go to the gym, and the next day, and then next hour you're off to work. But um, for me, it will be working from home, and um, it's touching base with all my clients, all the customers that we have, uh, just to see how they're going, what's happening. We don't want to, uh, and um, specifically for me, like I, uh, you know, well, I'm subcontracting to Google, and to just to see all my, you know, they're okay because. You know, the feedback of the old notion right now is that you know, everything is shut. There's a wall and it's so hard. So, uh, Can I ask what you do? Like, what is it that you do? Yeah, so I, I do client relationship. Okay. So I've got mainly at, uh, I do uh, schools. So schools use Chromebooks and things like that. Uh, it's my duty to get them there to the school, service exactly what they want, what they have for them to have it. And uh, they have a certain deadline that they need to that we need that we work by, and being Google, where it, it needs to be on point and it needs to be done. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's essentially what I do. Schools need Chromebooks and they need devices from Google, and we need to supply it to them. Uh, so my customer just touch base and see because now the kids would be you know they'll be off and they'll be you know school holidays or whatever is coming up. But uh, you know these uncertain times where they. There will be teachers or students will be going to school or not, and uh, we have features like Google Classroom and things like that, which is virtual and it's and it needs to be up and yeah. going for them. So tomorrow would be that, just to see if everything's working all right and uh, if they have all the proper support and they need. Yeah. And I'm guessing you've got Pri Priya and Elijah at I home. I do, I <laughs> do. So those are the, the they they I think they're my primary work. It, it, it's not <laughs> it's not Google. But uh, now it's, uh, yeah, navigating through that as well with Priya being at home. Um, you know, she, she's really good at what she does. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't sit about 10, I want to say 10, 12 feet away from each other. And uh, there's a little maestro in between. And Elijah's just all over. And because I think he's a, you know, one child, he would, wants attention from all of us. So, yeah, look, he, he does pull us uh, in 50 different ways. But uh, we just, you know, sit there and we pray and we ask. I think the most important thing as well, tomorrow we got to start off with and do things that we pray. We just commit everyone, mm. that Lord, that you protect us, protect our family, and also help us to, you know, with Elijah. Okay. He's little and, he, you know, he, he's... Um, uh, we all know he, he sits still in church and listens. <laughs> uh, he does the same at home, and I'm lying through my teeth. But uh, you know, it's, right. it's, 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 it, he, we have to pay attention to him at this time. So it's, it gets a little bit challenging, yeah. uh, but we're doing it. We're praying, and you know, the Lord's been there. So it's, it's been good, yeah. Great. So I guess that leads to the next question is, so how do you show faith in your work? Like, yeah. how do you show? Okay. Um, uh, at this time, well, uh, I have because because I, I deal with two different things. Right? Well, with everybody, you've got your teammates and you've also got your clients. With my teammates, uh, I see they're they're still you know, bit of young people and there's an, and there's a mixture and you can see that you know there's a young and they they they're, they're out every night and then they do their things. But it's just you know that 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 person that you you want to be person that sticks out. Not well, not sticks out like a sore thumb, but sticks out like you know who's there. And, uh, 
uh, they're going to be, they're, they're, you know, the young people will be young people. Mm. They'll, they'll still do their thing. They'll still go out and party. They'll still have fun. Mind you, they won't do it now, but, but they're still, you know, they, they have their culture. They have their, but you just got to be that person when they come in and they, and they you know, they want to share something. They go, oh, I've had a bad night. They come, well, hey, look what happened. You know, what's mm. going on? Hey, um, you, and, uh, and I still do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not scared to. I say, hey, I got you in my prayer. That's fine. I'll pray for you. You know, right. I'll say just, oh, look up, mate. It's okay. God's got you. You know, and yeah. those sorts of encouraging words. And um, and I've still got, and the people will Skype me all of a sudden, you know, they're sitting there and they go, hey, Dan, what's going on? And they go, da, da, da. And they'll say, okay, hey, you know what, mate, I just, uh, just wanted to share that this was, this was happening. And as soon as they go, I'll pray for you. And they'll say, that's what I was waiting for. Aww. But they don't, they, I mean, to them, it's, it's, it's for, I suppose for me is that, hey, look, I like being that person that they can turn to. Um, and you know, even they just want to release whatever mm. they want to be, and, and be the calmness and still and say, well, you know what, hey, mate, it, it's okay, you know, you, you've got this, don't, don't worry. And on the flip side to my clients is, I got to be that person that, you know, they, they, they'll lash out, they'll say things, but we just got to be just staying there and go, okay, hey, yeah. look, mate, it, it's okay, look, we understand. And then, you know, I, I just got to take down everything that I can absorb, put everything into pa in a paper and go <laughs> and give it, pass it on to my team and say, this needs to be done. Yeah. Urgent, whatever, you know, whatever it is, it needs to be done. Yeah. And uh, being that person, I suppose, um, you know, you, you need Jesus. And, um, you know, praying for the uh, fruits of the Spirit does, does, you know, the love, joy in terms of, you, you're not going to be that zealous person when they're wrong and you go, yeah! <laughs> you know, and you're, you're not that, but you, you're there, you understand what's going on, and you just be, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I quite, I suppose, just understanding yeah. what they want. Great. And yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. So, how can we as a church pray for you this week? Yeah, look, um, praying for um, uh, that, you know, we, we, the situation that we're in at the moment, that everybody, is, especially school kids, because uh, they are, you know, uh, they're, they're sort of the end recipient of what, mm. what I do. Yes. And so, the, you know, the, the, the kids there are taken care of and the kids mm. are, uh, in, in the, you know, in the forefront of what we do. And uh, that their, you know, their, their, their education, mm. and, 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 that's, and then that's what I do essentially, is that, you know, they, they need to be, because th we don't want to say, okay, well, this half a year or six months or whatever it is, however time mm. period, they mm. lose that. Mm. It's very valuable for those mm. kids to, Grow and nurture. I mean, I've, yeah. I've got a four-year-old, and I see him, you know, developing just about every day, and he you know, articulates words, and he says different things, and he does different moves. And same with, you know, with these kids as well, the teenagers that are out there, they they, they don't want to miss on their mm. valuable time. So if you pray, you know, that Lord, that you'll be there, and that, you know, through all these mediums mm. that people mm. are using, yes. that uh, you know, that they will be, uh, they won't miss out. Mm. And uh, praying for me would be just the strength and the courage, you know, to be the person that. Um, you know, that, that uh, I suppose God has put me mm. in the position and saying, okay, well, hey, you know what? I'm here, mate. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't worry. I, I got you, you know? And me looking to God and saying, God's got me. Yes. So I've got you. Or, right. you know, in turn, praying for them as well. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So that strength and good. courage, I suppose. Well, I think I'd like to pray for you right now. Is that Fantastic. all right? Fantastic. Yes, And please. everyone, please join with me as we, we pray now for Daniel. So. Oh Lord, we just thank you for Daniel. We thank you so much for his heart. He loves you so much. He is such a joyful, kind person. He's such a valuable person of our church community, Lord. We love him so much. And we ask now that you will just be with Daniel, Lord. Give him the courage, the confidence, the boldness um, to do this role that you've called him to do and to do it well, Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also pray for his beautiful family, for Priya and for Elijah, Lord. We thank you for this family, the Kumars, Lord, mm -hmm. such a beautiful family. We pray your peace over them at this time, your direction, Lord, as they're all in the house together, that they have time together, but they have time to do all the things mm. that they still need to do, Lord, and their jobs that they still need to do, that they have the quietness to sometimes do that, Lord God, and you make that possible. Yes. And Lord, we pray for the um, for the school children, Lord, and we pray for mm. this product that Daniel and, um, and, the, and the organization he works for with Google, Lord, that um, it works really well. And Lord, mm. we need all these platforms Father to work well so our kids in Australia are able to continue to learn 
mm. and grow father yes. in their education during mm. this time and we really ask that you um yeah that you are a part with this whole situation mm. with our students with our mm. teachers lord god with these it people mm. lord who are amazing mm. father we thank you for them we ask that you'll continue to guide them and bless them mm. and we especially pray that for for daniel and for his team lord god pray that he continues to just lead well with the people that he works with and he continues mm. um to to share you jesus with them so lord we just really pray that you are with daniel and his family and his work in jesus name amen, amen. amen. thank you so much for joining us today daniel that was great thank you karen You're i welcome. appreciate you thank you very and now we're going to hear a message well good morning everyone it's great to have you with us at c3 reach miranda online well i don't know about you but post easter uh, i've been trying to eat a bit healthier for the next few weeks while we're still close to home. Uh, I've decided to do my best to eat well Monday to Thursday and enjoy some treats on my own self-declared uh, long weekend, every weekend. It's based loosely on the, uh, you know, the effort and reward principle, so we will see how we go. Anyway, all of these thoughts of food have had me reflecting on not only how we nourish our physical bodies, but also how we nourish our spiritual bodies. There's an account in scripture about a crazy few weeks in the life of a guy named Elijah um, that I think is really helpful for us at the moment. So we're going to take a really brief journey this morning through 1 Kings chapters 18 and 19. Basically, the nation of Israel had been in drought for three years and Elijah was a prophet who had some good news for King Ahab. The king wasn't a follower of the Lord. In fact, he and his wife Jezebel were pretty mean characters uh, who worshipped a god called Baal. Jezebel had once tried uh, to kill all of the prophets of the God of Israel and um, both of them uh, had been after Elijah for quite a few years. So it would have taken a fair bit of courage for Elijah to head over to the palace to let the royals know that the rain was about to return. I don't know about you, but uh, I might have been thinking, hey, just let it rain when it rains. They'll hear the rain on the, uh, on the royal palace roof and uh, I'll stay well clear of them. But Elijah did what the Lord asked of him and presented himself to the king. And if that wasn't enough, he also challenged the king's 450 prophets of Baal uh, to a bake-off on Mount Carmel. Well, it was a bit more dramatic than a bake-off, more like an all-consuming fire-off. Elijah wanted to show the people of Israel who the one true God was. If the 450 Baal prophets uh, could call down fire to consume a sacrificial bull, then they won. Well, of course they didn't. Hour after hour, their pleas resulted in attracting nothing more than flies to the meat that was sitting before them in the afternoon sun. In dramatic fashion, the sole prophet of the Lord, uh, finally took his turn, insisting that water be poured over the meat three times just to ensure that they knew that he wasn't cheating. And then a huge fire from heaven completely consumed the animal, the wood, the stone, and even the water itself that had been poured over it. Of course, the people were amazed and they pledged their faith to the one true God. And that was the end of the road for the 450 prophets of Baal. What a moment for Elijah. He'd listened to God, he'd gone the bold, and he'd come out the other side victorious. To top things off, the Lord then gave, them, gave him a heads up that uh, it was about to absolutely pour with rain. So he warned Ahab to get back to the palace quick smart, even though there wasn't yet a cloud in the sky. When Ahab went back to the palace and let his wife know what had happened, she hit the roof and she swore that she was going to take Elijah's life the very next day. Interestingly, instead of trusting in the same God who had just brought him through probably the toughest assignment that he'd ever had in his life, instead Elijah ran in fear for his life and ended up under a tree in the wilderness asking to die. What a, what a contrast of 24 hours for Elijah. The Lord, though, didn't leave him alone in his despair. Instead, he sent an angel to Elijah who brought him a meal, uh, some baked bread and water, and not just one meal, but a couple of them. The Lord wanted to ensure that Elijah had enough strength for the days ahead when he'd be making a journey 
uh, to the mountain of the Lord that was going to take him 40 days. Now, once Elijah made it there, the Lord had an incredible conversation with him. And it's in this conversation that we realize that one of the reasons that Elijah is so down is that he thinks he's the only one of God's prophets left. In actual fact, the Lord tells him that there are 7,000 other prophets who follow the Lord and they'll be standing with him and he was going to be sending him a successor that we later find out is named Elisha. Now, all of this to say that through this passage of Scripture, the Lord has really been speaking to me about what we're feeding on. If you read back a few chapters, you'll see this wasn't the first time that the Lord had provided uh, a meal or food for Elijah. In fact, he'd done it on a number of occasions. I get the sense that this is a picture of the Lord trying to still in confidence, uh, instill confidence and courage and nourishment to Elijah. Yet instead, he kept feeding on another source of information. Instead of allowing the words and actions of God himself to strengthen him, Elijah allowed himself to be brought low by external threats and harassments. Now, if we took Elijah's experiences over the weeks that are recorded in chapters 18 and 19 and put them in a graph, um, there would not be a flat curve. The graph would look more like a roller coaster, depicting the roller coaster of emotions that he experienced, you know, standing before a king who wanted to kill him, witnessing the sheer power of God's fire from heaven, getting an insight from God about the coming rain, hearing yet another threat against his life, running away to the wilderness, what a low, hiding, thinking that he was completely on his own, being comforted and fed by an angel, and finally having this conversation with the living God, finding out that in fact he wasn't alone and that the Lord was going to send him a successor in Elisha. What an incredible roller coaster of emotions. And while the situation might be very different for us, you may have been experiencing a similar roller coaster of emotions over the past few weeks. Maybe the lows of being separated from family and friends, or dealing with the challenges of job loss, or working and studying from home with all of the technology issues surrounding that. Then there's the lows that we've all been experiencing of knowing that behind every single number um, of COVID stats means a grieving family somewhere in the world. Then there's been the highs of gathering together in online spaces like this one, or walks in your neighborhood and hearing the birds in the trees because there's less cars on the road. Then there's the high of simply sitting in the sunshine with a cup of tea. Whatever the range of emotions that you've experienced the past few weeks, I believe that we can take courage and hope from these few weeks in Elijah's life. First, Let's keep our focus on the goodness of God and importantly on his voice, the voice of our good shepherd who leads us into green pastures and beside still waters and gives us rest for our souls. When we tune into God's frequency, which is really listening to and being guided by the Holy Spirit, it helps us tune out the negative voices, which sometimes can include even our own. I think of it like an old radio tuner in the, day before, the days before digital, you know, the old dial. You can't tune into two stations at once, can you? So we may as well keep ours tuned into the one that's going to provide us with hope and courage. Second, let's run into the arms of Jesus in the challenging moments rather than away from him. Let's not be like Elijah and run into the wilderness. He'd never felt so alone and yet, when he actually had a conversation with God, he realized that he was never alone. Jesus promises to be with us and to never forsake us or leave us. And we need to take him at his word on this. I think running into the arms of Jesus can also practically look like picking up the phone or sending a text to us for help if we need it. We were created for relationship and we need to be there for one another. If you're feeling down, don't be tempted to further isolate yourself. Pray, absolutely, 
but we're part of a caring community and that's what God always intended. So it's important to stay in community as much as possible during this time. Finally, and I'm coming back to where I started with the food theme, let's be careful what we're feeding on. The Lord is there to nourish us with spiritual food, just like he provided Elijah with that baked bread and water. Let's be feeding on his word, whether it's a verse of the day that you receive on your phone or um, a Bible reading plan or a favorite book or devotional that you read. If you're visiting with us today and you're not quite sure how to get your hands on some of these resources, just click on the connect with us or the live prayer button and one of our team would love to um, put you in touch with, um, with, with some of these resources. In these coming weeks, the courage, energy and refreshing that you need will come from time spent in the presence of Jesus, the giver of life. In John 6.35, the words of Jesus are recorded saying, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So this week, let's remember to tune in to God's frequency and focus on his goodness. Let's not run from Jesus in our low times, but to him. Let's remember to pick up the phone or send a text and, and not isolate, our, isolate ourselves, but to be part of community so that we can support one another. And let's keep feeding and nourishing ourselves spiritually on his word. Why don't we pray? Lord, we thank you for this time together. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you created us for community. We thank you that uh, you're a good God. And Lord, that when we tune into your voice, Lord, we hear hope and we hear freedom. And uh, Lord, we, we hear truth. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us this week uh, to nourish ourselves spiritually, Lord, on your word, to nourish ourselves by being in community with one another to nourish ourselves by running into the arms of Jesus. And uh, so, Lord, we pray, uh, pray for your blessing over everybody um, who is watching today. Bless them and their families, Lord. Those who are feeling isolated, Lord, I pray that uh, this week, Lord, they would experience a caring community around them. And uh, so, Lord, we give you all honour and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, bless you this week. Hey church, thanks for joining us today. We really enjoyed doing this online church experience with you and we want to thank you for taking the time out today to join us. Right now, I want to give you an opportunity to say a prayer and invite Jesus into your heart. You know, the Bible says that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us and that's how he demonstrated his love for you and for me. So right now, I want to ask you, what is it that you need? Because he, our King Jesus, is offering love, hope, joy, peace, freedom, whatever it is you need right now in your life. He came to give in abundance and I'm asking you, what do you want? What do you need? Because the answer is Jesus. And if this is, if this is for you, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Jesus, right now, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me, and I'm sorry for living life my own way. Jesus, I know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I make that put you first in my heart right now. I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me live this life that you've given me for you. We love you, Jesus, and thank you for all that you've done for us. Amen. Church, if you've just said that prayer with me, please click the link below of raise your hand and say, hey, I want to connect with you. I want to join this church family and do this walk of faith with my church community. We love you. God bless you and hope you have a great day. What a great message. Please feel free to share this online experience with your friends and your family. Oh, welcome back. Hey. Where have you been? I was uh, watching the kids program in the other room. Oh, you know, you can watch that all week. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm going to keep watching it every day. Oh, awesome. Make sure you check it out as well. We'll see you next week. Bye.